I would say that the number one question I get asked when I bring people out into the woods to study and collect mushrooms uh, is this. Recently, I had the opportunity to go to the North America Mycological Association's foray. So they have regional forays all throughout North America, but then they have like this one big giant gathering where a bunch of mushroom nerds get together from all over North America. When it comes to the North America Mycological Association, this is the coming together of all these other mushroom clubs. So people from all different areas and all these different clubs come together. So if you're going to the North America Mycological Association event, you're not just a very casual mushroom hunter. Usually you're someone who's pretty well invested in the practice. You are someone who's invested in the science. You're someone who's invested in the education and the research. Uh, there are people there um, who are world renowned as far as the research projects that they've been doing uh, or the education that they have done throughout their lives. Lives. I need to take this opportunity and ask them some of the questions you guys asked. If you remember Instagram, I asked you guys, I said, what are some of the common myths or misconceptions or questions that seem to come up a lot when it comes to mushrooms and mushroom foraging? Let me just interrupt myself real quick. So originally I had the idea of getting these answers from folks at NEMA 2018. Turns out people had such great insight and good answers. So this is going to be just part one of a three part series that we are going to do in answering these questions. All right, back to me. So I went around and I asked these experts and these uh, people who have a lot of experience what they thought about some of these things. So. Can I touch any mushroom that I want? If the mushroom is toxic, will I get poisoned just by touching it? Absolutely not. <laughs> toxic mushrooms cannot hurt you at all by touching them. You won't get poisoned by touching a mushroom. It's just like you won't get pregnant from holding hands. <laughs> oh my God, that's the best answer I've had yet. Yeah, that is a common question I get as well. And we, we often tell people that you can taste any mushroom. So not, not only can you touch any mushroom, you know, you can actually take a bite out of a poisonous mushroom, a deadly poisonous mushroom. But taste does not mean swallow. You can take a small bit in your mouth, kind of let it sit, you know, chew it up a small amount, let it sit on your tongue, see if there's a certain flavor or a certain, you know, uh, if it's hot or bitter, but then you spit it out. So taste does not equal swallow. And so you can, you can actually taste even deadly poisonous mushrooms. But you, yeah, you definitely don't want to eat them. But touching, touching them is universally going to be okay. So there, I guess there are some exceptions, but for, for, especially for the general population, I have no concerns. Excellent. You can, you can touch them, you can taste them, you can you know, chew them, spit them out. Full-time mushroomer. I'm a graduate student at Oregon State University. Uh, where I'm studying fungal chemistry and I focus on fungi and genus Talpoclinium, better known by their synonyms Cordyceps and Alaphocordyceps. Only if you're drinking arsenic while you're doing it. <laughs> oh gosh. There, there actually is one in Southeast Asia, but you know, fortunately it doesn't grow here. So it was written up in Fungi Magazine. Okay. So but nice uh, in North America, you're pretty safe. They're, they're in the <laughs> Hypocreaceae. Uh, that's that's this mushroom podostroma and there are some purported accounts of people getting sick and even dying from touching that mushroom it makes these um, terpenoid compounds called trichothecenes which are very toxic so uh, that's an uncommon mushroom this mushroom is not toxic it's a common edible it's the same color though they're bright red they're described from i think primarily japan you can touch and sniff all the mushrooms except for maybe some Freaky black mold in your home. 
<laughs> you shouldn't be putting your fingers in your mouth after you touch <laughs> mushrooms because you're picking up maybe some little germs here and there, little bacteria and other little things that you might not do too well with your tummy, but mm -hmm. most people are afraid of touching mushrooms if they don't know. But you can do that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, well there, you're actually, are, uh, that's, that's a funny question. There is a swillus that can cause a skin rash? Mostly no. However, mm. I'm one of the people that are the exception to oh. the rule because I handled Amanita phylloides one time um, to get a Meisner test, which is basically you're looking for amatoxins, and it's something simple. It's a simple lab test you can do at home. Um, and I chose to squeeze mm -hmm a waterlogged phylloides with my bare hand and I got acutely sick for about eight hours but that's highly unusual if you just touch a mushroom that's not gonna happen to you. that particular toxin if you eat it by mouth your saliva and the acidity to your stomach neutralizes it but it still leaves the amatoxins in your system yeah, so that's eating is different than touching yeah mm -hmm. By and large, in most situations, you can handle any mushroom. Other than that, Swillis, which can produce a poison oak reaction in some people. And uh, you, you have to respect the deadly. There, there's a reason they call Amanita phylloides the death <laughs> cap, and I learned that. <laughs> As you guys kind of heard, the general consensus, it's okay to touch the mushrooms. There is some scenarios though where there's an excessive touching or an excessive exposure uh, that may be the exception to the rule. Wash your hands, then eat your food. Basic principles of hygiene and you should be fine. Along with the theme of toxicity, the question arose, if you taste test a mushroom and it tastes good, it's okay to eat. Or if it tastes bad, it means it's toxic. Is that true? Nope. Not at all. <laughs> nope. No, absolutely not. So a lot of people say the death cap is one of the tastiest mushrooms they've eaten before they died. <laughs> or if they survived. Or if they survived. Right. But, you know, after... But if you're dumb enough to eat it, you got to cover, cover your bases by saying, oh, but it tasted really good. Almost losing their liver. Oh, um, no, that is not the case. I, I understand that Amanita um, phylloides is actually quite delicious, though it is the, one of the most toxic mushrooms in the world. Now, some of you may have heard that it's a okay to taste test your mushrooms, and that's true. But what you're testing for is not if a mushroom is edible or not. Taste is just another one of the many elements that you need to add to the puzzle to figure out what your mushroom is. So you've got like size and color and texture and smell. You can add taste to that list and it's just another factor that slips in there. It's not a test if you can eat it or not. It's just another one of the factors that go into making the whole picture. Okay, with that being said, I need to put a word of caution out there. Please be wise. Spit that thing out, don't put much in your mouth, and if you're around small children, don't you dare do this in front of them because they are gonna follow your example, all right? So this is almost more of a when you get to the advanced level and you need to start adding that element as something to balance and check what mushroom you might have, feel free and do that. But other than that, I would say there's no need for it at this point, especially as a beginner. You would be surprised how often this actually comes up <laughs> and this is if you're cooking a mushroom and you put either a silver coin or a silver spoon in with those mushrooms that are cooking if it turns black the spoon or the coin that means the mushroom is toxic true or false that is not a test of anything right other than getting a spoon hot <laughs> so no no, there is no quick way or a shortcut to determining whether or not a mushroom is toxic. I would recommend not breathing in the fumes when you're cooking mushrooms though, because they do release toxins, some mushrooms that are edible that are not good for you. They're like neurotoxins. Like yeah. gyromycha? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Oh, that must certainly be false. There are all sorts of mushroom toxins and various um, 
toxic you know, in various groups, unrelated fungi, unrelated toxins. I don't think they're all going to turn your spoon a color. I can't even answer that. That sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and you put in a silver spoon or a silver coin and it turns black. Does it mean you're not supposed to eat the mushroom because it's poisonous? 100%. That works every time. <laughs> Stop! Don't you dare do this! As far as I'm aware, there, is, there simply is no tried and true technique of knowing if a mushroom's poisonous or not, besides identifying it to within a, like a reasonable doubt and getting it checked out by somebody else who knows even more than you, um, who's you know basically willing to take the time and help you, help you see what it is you're actually working with. <laughs> you're shaking your head long before. Do not use folklore to decide whether you can eat a mushroom or not. That is just not wise at all. Love it. It means you have really cheap silver. You know? So, no, in, in all seriousness, there's no way to tell whether a mushroom is poisonous using any type of common metric like that. The only way to tell if a mushroom is poisonous is to ID it to species. You know, actually, there might be one mushroom where it works. So, there might the origination of the study might be that there's one mushroom where it actually works. But for all the mushrooms, no. This is. Um, in German, we call it a wet nurse fairy tale. <laughs> that one may seem a little tongue in cheek, a little bit funny. People share the story with someone else. And yeah, people still believe that to be true to this day uh, because I get people instructing me on that sometimes. And I just want to say, if you are one of those people who have instructed me, please don't feel bad. Sometimes family folklore just becomes truth and reality. Um, but there's kind of now this meshing of uh, ancient practices in current science and sometimes they come together and sometimes they don't and in this case it doesn't. So I think the overall theme here and you've heard a couple of people mention this is there's no one tried and true test where you can tell out in the field if a mushroom is toxic or not. You need to get to know each mushroom individually. Then you can figure out is it deemed edible or is it deemed toxic. This is by far on social media the biggest asked question and the biggest debate that I get from people, all right? And I would also say the biggest debate amongst mushroom foragers in general. So let's get to the point. When you are out harvesting edible mushrooms from a sustainability point of view, which is the best way to harvest? Cutting your mushrooms at the base or plucking your mushrooms? So the age old question, cut versus pluck. I say you can do whatever the hell you want. It shouldn't make a difference <laughs> whatsoever. Um, I mean, I think if you're going for an ID perspective, you actually want to pull because then you can kind of see what the mycena look like and it's an extra factor you can use in IDing. But, um, but yeah, in terms of sustainability, it doesn't make a difference. I think they were looking at chanterelles, and they have mm -hmm. these plots of chanterelles, and you know, some of them they cut, some of them they pluck, some of them they just leave alone. And there's, and this is a long-term study, of course, like 20 years, right? Yeah. And so they have long-term data, and there's really, really no variation in, in term. Uh, honestly, I think the study showed that the, the plots where they plucked were actually slightly higher in terms of their annual yeah. output than if you cut them. And so, no, it, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever you prefer. Um, to me, it depends upon the mushroom, whether I'm going to do a clear cut or... And a lot of times I try to pinch it off, but I don't lose sleep if, if a little soil and mycelium comes with it. Although one important thing was, you know, disruption of the... the the mycelial mat in the soil, the habitat, uh, that's more important. So when you're out picking mushrooms, just be sure to um, be ecologically mindful and not disturb their habitat where they need to grow. Um, but cutting versus plucking, I don't think that's uh, too important. Cut versus pluck. Pluck. Oh, let's keep it a debate because there's no easy answer. And you know, when you look in nature, some animals bite their mushrooms and others pluck them. And I don't think it makes a big difference. Picker's preference. I don't think it makes much difference, yeah. does it? Not in terms of the environment because it's like taking an apple off a tree, it's not going to hurt the tree. And if you leave them alone and you carry them out in your little basket, 
every place that you walk spread spores and there'll be more mushrooms there where you walked exactly. than where the cut and pluck plots are there. you can cut <laughs> you can pluck it doesn't make a bit of difference I don't know if the answers are surprising some of you. Some of you are probably nodding your heads and like, thank goodness this is finally on video. People saying that it doesn't matter. And then some of you are probably cringing in your seats and being like, no, no, no. I don't care if that was the president of NEMA. He's got it wrong. <laughs> okay, so the consensus amongst pretty much everybody we asked is it doesn't matter which way you do it. A couple of people referenced uh, a few studies so the two significant studies that have been done that I know of, uh, and if you know of any others, please let me know. I would love to find more resources on it. Uh, the Swiss study done in Switzerland uh, with a variety of mushrooms, uh, and then the Cantharellis project done with chanterelles that was done uh, in the Mount Hood National Forest. All right, so after concluding these studies, which the Cantharellis project was over 10 years long, and they monitored you know, weather and rainfall and seasonal patterns, and it was in a restricted area where public didn't have access, so you didn't have to factor in other people coming in. Uh, the end result, that it didn't matter. Uh, the pots were producing evenly. There was a tiny, tiny margin that was slightly favorable towards the plots that were plucked, where the mushrooms were plucked, and a small margin also that showed the areas that were harvested from actually fruited better in the following years. These margins, though, were so small that it's not quite noteworthy enough to be concrete evidence for anything. So the way I do it, I do it mushroom by mushroom. Because the reality is these studies are not super in depth with every kind of species that we go out and harvest. Could it be different mushroom by mushroom? Absolutely. Sure it could be, but we don't have the, the means to know that yet. So when I go out, it's dependent on how the mushroom is attached to either a tree or in the ground as to whether I pluck it or whether I use my knife. And the amount of dirt that I might get attached if I pluck it may want, make me want to cut the mushroom. But I do have to say, you understand that this question is asked when we're out harvesting edible mushrooms that we already know how to identify, right? Because if it's a mushroom that we don't know what it is and we're trying to take it home and look at it to identify it, you need to take the whole mushroom with you. Hey, there's crucial evidence at the base of that stem and you need to make sure you get the whole thing and take it home. But this question is about edible mushrooms and sustainability of harvest. I also need to add this important factor. The disruption of mycelium, which is kind of like the root network of the mushroom, which is under the ground within the trees, the disruption of that is really the part that can be detrimental to a fungus. So if you are out and you have some bad harvesting practices like using rakes, to dig up truffles or matsutake, you're destroying the mycelial network. And loss of habitat, uh, loss of old growth forest, uh, the excessive trampling on the ground, uh, compression of soil, those kinds of things are more detrimental to a fungal's reproduction than us going out and picking and harvesting mushrooms. So, Keep in mind the perspective of if you go out and you tread lightly, you don't leave trash behind, you can cut or you can pluck. It's your choice. No matter what you do, you're probably going to get someone telling you you're doing it wrong. And if you get that, then reference this video to them. There you go. Now do that thing that you don't like to do. What thing? Oh, dang it! <laughs> right. And remember, and remember, please subscribe, like, comment, ask more questions. Uh, the more questions and feedback we get from you guys, uh, the better our topics are going to be. And spread the love. Go sporulate. Share with your friends. <laughs>